We're back. This is Workshop 1776. I'm Jack. That's Stanley. Today we're drinking Deschutes Brewery Mirror Pond Pale Ale. We're building this. Okay, so today's project was <clears throat> a custom mantle that I made for my sister-in-law. She lives right down the street from us, so she was wondering if I could uh, transform their fireplace that had kind of a funky like frame around it, you'll see it in a minute, uh, and put a, a, a mantle in there so they could hang their stockings for Christmas on it. This was a very specific project. I had to do some kind of strange things that I didn't, I wouldn't have normally done if you're just making a regular mantle to hang on the wall. But let's get started. So I made the entire thing out of three quarter inch birch veneer plywood from Home Depot. This stuff can be kind of expensive, it's about I want to say it's like 30 bucks or something like that for a little like four by two sheet. Um, so what I did at first was I went over to her house and I measured out the exact dimensions that they needed the mantle because basically the way it's set up, like I said, you'll see in a minute, there's bricks lining the side and then bricks across the front and then there's like an inset with plywood and then inside that inset there is a half inch frame of wood that goes around it and there's like a little bit of a gap between the bricks and the frame. So basically we're going to take it and slide it in between the frame and the bricks and uh, it'll, it'll make sense in a minute. So I went over there, measured it all out, um, drew it out on uh, just a piece of paper to make sure I had everything correct and um, then I took my woodpecker's T-square which is great for working with plywood and just transferred those dimensions onto the plywood so I could take them over to the table saw. Um, and then just rip them to the correct widths and lengths. Uh, the idea here was to make just a box. It's, a, it's just a square box and I wanted to use mitered edges on all of the edges so you wouldn't see any of the end grain, especially because we're using plywood and plywood, you know, end grain doesn't look good. So what I ended up doing was ripping all of the pieces to the right widths and then uh, canting my table saw blade to 45 degrees using the little Wixie digital angle finder, blade angle finder, I don't know what it's called, but the thing's awesome, it makes your life a lot easier, especially if you have a cheaper table saw like I do that doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not very accurate and it moves around a lot, so. What I ended up doing was to make the bevels on the, the correct sides. The easiest way to do this is to like lay, like cut all your pieces to width and then kind of lay it out how it's gonna be and then mark on the correct side, like where you're gonna put the bevels and which way they're going. So I didn't show it just because I, forgot to film it, but it makes your life a lot easier when you pick up all those pieces and then move them over to the table saw, you know which how to orient them um, and cut the correct angle in the right place so it all goes together in a box instead of you cutting it, you know, two like this or one like this and one like that and then it's on the wrong side or whatever. So just make sure your layout's good and that you mark it correctly because that will help you in the long run when you're trying to make these cuts on the table saw. For the longer pieces, I use my crosscut sled because it's safer than just like trying to push it through. I didn't want it to get bound up, especially when it's on the end like that. For the little tiny end caps, so because of this thing is the way it is, um, there's little end caps on them and I cut bevels on all four sides and just like plopped them onto the side. This was really sketchy. I couldn't think of a better way to do it, maybe using my miter saw, <clears throat> um, just so they're not sliding because they are such small pieces. Um, or another option here, which is probably way, way safer, is if you have a bandsaw, cant your table on the bandsaw to 45 degrees and then push them through that way. That way, even if it gets bound up, you're not, it's not going to kick back and uh, mess you up. But I felt okay. I started doing it and I felt okay doing it, so um, I went with this. I would recommend using your miter saw or your bandsaw if you have one, uh, just to get these, these cuts for the, the really small pieces. That being said, if you're ever cutting something and you don't feel right about it, stop. Just don't do it. Right here, you can see that um, how the the bevels are kind of going together to form that like that like seamless edge. Uh, I also planned on painting this, so I wasn't super worried about tear out. Um, so we'll see that later. I was going to use uh, wood filler and then just paint it, so it wouldn't. Uh, we would take care of any little gaps or whatever, just because plywood is kind of finicky and if it chips out or whatever, it's kind of hard to fix. And I didn't want to have to deal with it. 
All right, so for this part, this is the top piece and she wanted it to run even with the bottom section of the frame. So if you don't know what I'm saying, I'll show it to you in a second. Um, I might just throw a picture up so you guys know what I'm saying. But what I ended up having to do was take this box and then cut a notch out about, um, I think it's like three or four inches in from the sides, about halfway into the, the top of it, just so the back half of the mantle was the forward half of the frame. Like I said, I know that's a lot of things, but I'll explain it in a minute. So I was kind of at a loss for what to do here. So I took my jigsaw and just like notched in halfway and on both sides and I was trying to figure out how the best way to cut out that middle section. And what I ended up doing was just using my jigsaw, which didn't give me a very clean line, which I know I could have set up a straight edge and all that, but what I ended up doing was cutting it, cutting it all the way with the jigsaw and then going over to the bandsaw and just kind of fine tuning it. I just like wrote it right up to the line um, with that. So that was the way I decided to do it. Um, there's probably a million other ways to do it. I've seen a lot of people use like, make a little template out of MDF or something like that. And then use like a flush trim bit to catch up, like to make it exactly the perfect smooth line, but I don't have a flesh trim bit, so I did this. Sorry. Uh, so here, what was I gonna say? Oh, one thing I did try to do, which is a mistake, and I didn't even put it in here because I was like, whatever. I tried to do like a plunge cut with the, with the, um, I tried to do a plunge cut with the table saw. So, Basically what that is, is you put the wood over the top of it and then raise the blade. It's very popular with circular saws, which I don't even think you can see. It's really popular with circular saws to just get into the middle of a cut and then go. Um, but it started, once I started raising the blade, it was not, I, I didn't feel good about it. So I call it off. Like I said earlier, if you don't feel good about something, don't do it. Just find a new way to do it. Um, there's a thousand different ways to cut, you know, to make a specific cut. So reach out to someone, don't do anything unsafe. Okay, so for the body, what, I, what I, my envisioning was I was gonna do the outsides, the back was gonna be left open because that's what was gonna be screwed into the wall, and I was gonna leave the front off until I had the, the carcass, the main body. <clears throat> oh no, don't crash. No! It's like some bad footage. It crashes Adobe every time I, every time it gets to that spot, it crashes. So I just gotta delete it. And I have to sit here. Okay. So what I was, stop. Okay. So what I was saying was, I'm basically gonna put the outside of the box in onto the wall, mount it, secure it, and then put glue on the front face, and then just plop it onto the front. Um, so. That was, the, that was the plan basically, so right there I was assembling the four corners of the box, leaving the back and the front off so I could have access to all the screws and stuff and then like I said, just kind of seal them up with the front. In the notched out section, I was going to use pocket holes and pocket hole screws to drill, like to secure the mantle to the frame portion that's on, like already existed on the wall and I felt like I needed a little bit more support. Um, just because they were going to be putting things onto it. It's not going to be, people aren't going to be doing pull-ups on this thing or anything, but I wanted a little bit more, um, like structure to it. So what I ended up doing was cutting down some two by fours to fit into the corners of the mantle and then just gluing them into place. And that's how I would secure it to the wall for like the outsides of the mantle. I made a mistake here and put them in the wrong spot, which was fun, so I had to take those off and do it again. So yeah, I let them sit overnight, came back. What is happening? Why is my computer, everything is going crazy right now. So right there, I was just presetting all the pro pocket, pocket hole screws. Man, I can't talk. Um, and then pre-drilling the holes that uh, into the little pieces of two by four that were going to be like support structure for, you know, the mounting of the, of the mantle. There's that Wixy digital finder thing that I told you about. And now I'm just finishing the rest of the box. Um, painter's tape is a great way to clamp angled stuff like that. I ended up putting a, 
uh, or I ended up putting a bar clamp on it just because it was a little bit out of square and I, I just used it to pull it into square. I wasn't, I wasn't putting a whole bunch of clamping pressure on there because I didn't want to have the ankles slide on me. You know, I didn't want the corners to slide off or anything like that. It was just to pull one, one little piece wasn't perfectly square. So I just pulled it back into square and let the glue dry. Okay. So there is the, that's the frame I was talking about. So you can see right there how the bricks kind of make like an H shape, like a letter H. And then there's a little bit of a gap, like a three or four inch gap on all the sides. And then there's like a, that, that white frame thing, like the, with butt joints that is in the wall, like that is part of their house. So we were trying to, the whole point was you can see how the bottom edge of the frame is completely in line with the top edge of a couple of these bricks right here. So the plan was, to make the mantle fit just underneath, like the width of the bricks basically, with a little bit of a gap on the bottom. Um, and now you, now you can really see that the, like the, the shelf that the frame creates, that bottom piece, will be basically the back half of part of the mantle. So like I said, I cut out the notch and it's gonna just slide in there and be one seamless, well not seamless, one shelf with like the two you know, vertical sections of the frame coming out of it. All right, so now I'm just securing it. Well, now I'm eating a donut. Um, and then I was securing it. I think I had two donuts that day. It was bad. Um, securing the screws, applying the wood glue. Um, I made sure that I put a, a decent amount of wood glue on this just because the, I didn't really have a very good way to clamp this. So I just used, um, you can see I used the painter's tape again. Uh, but it is kind of hanging off of the front, so I didn't want, yeah, I didn't want any problems. So I, I put a decent amount of wood glue and then I just cleaned it up later. Okay, so while the front piece glue was drying, um, I took some wood filler and I just filled some of the gaps. So some of the gaps were a little too big for wood filler, so I ended up having to put more on than I thought I was going to, uh, but it, it worked out fine. Uh, once it dried and I sanded it down, it was completely seamless. And then I also, um, like I said, was planning on painting it. So everything where there is a seam, I tried to, I put, I tried to put wood filler on, including the seams left from the mitered edges. Uh, like I said, this is plywood, it's finicky, it blows out, a lot of other stuff. So I tried to put wood filler in there, really good cinematography, nice job. Just stand in front of the camera. Here I'm applying it to the front seam. And then while that was drying, I applied some, or maybe this was the next day. Yeah, this was the next day. So I, I went home, came back, uh, applied some painter's tape. There's my niece. And I just put on a couple coats of like bare white paint um, that we had used for another project that matched perfectly, so that worked out. I think I put, I want to say put three or four coats on. I, I don't remember, but it was it was more than I thought I was going to need, especially because plywood's so smooth, I didn't think it was going to need a whole lot of extra coats, and it was a light color, so I was like, whatever, but um, I put like three or four coats on. I did have a little bit of like bleed over from the paint, and one thing where I messed up here was I would have used frog tape instead of the blue painter's tape, just because um, frog tape is like the green painter's tape that they have at Home Depot and Lowe's and all that. It, it's a little bit more like unappliable, I guess, and it, it's better for non-smooth surfaces. Like the, the back of the, their, like the bricks are like textured obviously, and then the, the walls have a little bit of like texturing on them too. So <clears throat> it would have done a better job at sealing it up, but um, I went back and like cleaned it all up later. It wasn't a big deal. I just had to, you know, do some touch up. They didn't leave a perfect line. So frog tape is awesome for like more textured stuff. It's awesome for everything, but it's way more expensive. So that was it, that was the whole project. Uh, this one was kind of a, a different one for me. Like I don't really go to people's houses very often and build stuff for their home. So that was a really fun experience. It was cool that I got to do it for family. And um, that last day when I painted it was Christmas Eve. So it had it was Christmas Eve morning. So I, um, they were, it, by the time it dried, they were able to like hang their stockings on it for Christmas, which was pretty cool. 
So that was that was really cool to be able to be a part of that. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was a new process for me. I made I made so many mistakes that I that weren't on film because they were like preparedness mistakes. Like I didn't bring. I went over there and I thought all I need is a drill, and uh, you know a couple other things. When I got there, I had forgotten that I needed you know I had I needed a bunch of tools that I, I because they're always here because I can just get whatever. I didn't prepare well enough to go. So it was a huge learning experience and um, <clears throat> always bring more stuff than you think you need because you're gonna run into a problem most likely, especially if you're newer newer to you know traveling with your tools, even though it was right it was just across town. Um, it took me like an hour and a half longer than it would have because I had to come all the way home just to get a couple things. Uh, that was that was a really good learning experience. They're they're really happy with it. Um, they they're like super pumped to be able to like actually hang their stockings on something <laughs> because the bricks weren't quite wide enough to put like the stocking hangers on there. But yeah, it was it was a really cool thing and uh, it's like a kind of a centerpiece for their home. So uh, it, it was a cool project. So I think I've said cool project like 55 times. But that's fine. All right. So for the channel channel update, we're there. We did it. So over Christmas and New Year's, we've had the like, the channel exploded. We were, I think my last video, we were at like just barely at 1,300 subscribers or something like that. And now we're over 2,600 in a matter of a week and a half or two weeks or something like that, which is crazy. Um, the views are like going th like through the roof and we're getting really good feedback, a lot of comments and stuff, which um, if you guys don't know, comments really help YouTube like let people know that they like the video, the likes and the comments. That's why everyone always asks for them um, because it, it tells YouTube's little like robot that people like the video and they're interacting with it. They're spending more time on the platform so they want to promote it so more people would. It's, yeah, that's the whole point. So we're getting a lot of comments and views and stuff like that, which is awesome. Um, and uh, Patreon has actually started um, to pick up too, which is really cool. Um, I didn't think I'd get any patrons for a long time just because we're a relatively small channel. So I want to thank all of you guys. It's um, it's big big news for us. Like um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, 2019 was crazy. We only did I think we started <clears throat> in August was the first video. Or it was it was the last day of July was the first video. So you know less than half the year and we're already like monetized and all that stuff. So I, I want to say thank you. 2019 was great and we're really excited for 2020. <clears throat> I have a lot of projects coming. One, we're going to do a series of projects. Um, it looks like we're getting a lot of people who are like new to woodworking. So what we're going to do is do a series of videos. I think I have like six right now lined up that are like first project videos. So it's going to be a very in-depth look of how to make something like a bottle opener that you can put on the wall or um, like a pallet wine rack because pallets are pretty easy to come by and they're cheap, like they're either cheap or free. Um, and they're not very hard to make. So we're gonna do basic tools, in-depth, like things that you don't really think about when you're building, if you don't, if you haven't built anything before. So um, stay tuned for that. Those, those ideas ha are getting pushed to Patreon. That's kind of like the test audience for what we make. Um, but that's it. 2020 is coming. You know, 2020 is here, and we're we're ready for it. We're excited. So I hope you guys like the beard. It exists now. Um, what else? Well, you got anything, Stanley? For those of you who don't know, Stanley is my first employee, and he has been working for us since Halloween, and he hasn't done anything at all. He's very lazy. He just stands there. All right. Beer review? Beer review. All right. Mirror Pond, or Deschutes Brewery, Mirror Pond Pale Ale. This is going to come as a shock, but I like it. <clears throat> 